G'day, welcome back. Today I'm going to cover the masking tool inside Lightroom mobile app. It is fantastic. It is the one thing that has been missing with Lightroom, especially on the mobile, is that selective editing. Select the sky, select the background, radial, linear gradient. You've also got color range, luminance range, and on the iPhone you've got depth range, which is the HEIC in uh, portrait mode captures. The thing that excites me the most is that you can go in and refine your selection, and I'll explain that too. I'll show you what you can and can't do with this and show you some tricks and hacks and how to get the most out of this. <music> So this is what it looks like now and depending if you hold your phone horizontal or vertical you'll go from an icon to having the actual icon listed there and it's now masking instead of selective. Now I have some examples here that I want to show you. This is what the select sky looks like. It is amazing. I mean previously we would have to use linear gradient to be able to and linear gradient is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. Still use it on a daily basis. It's, you can go from 100% adjustment up the top and then gradually reduce your opacity until it's zero. And that's for skies, that is brilliant because skies are a nice clear blue sky. It'll be dark up the top and then it'll gradually reduce to, uh, to a lower intensity uh, blue as you get closer to the horizon. So it works really well. And you can see there that the flagpole, I mean, have a look at that, it's picked up that flagpole, even this small one in the distance. Now a linear gradient would apply that same effect to the flagpole. Now we're bypassing all those things that kind of stick out. From some photos it doesn't work so well. An example here is this one here. Because there's no real clear contrast and distinction between the foreground or the, the, the water and the sky, it's a bit muddy and you've got those real fine details, you can end up with a result like this. It's not a bad thing, it's just understanding the limitations and being able to work with it. Now this is an example where I would actually just use the linear gradient, I wouldn't even bother with the, with the select background. Here's another example, select subject, an example like this, it works really well because you have that clear background, the contrast in focus, that sort of thing. Now you can see there, the mask is actually green, the one before was red. You also have the option of blue, so depending on what the subject is, the background, you can see here, green on green makes it really hard. What you can do also is you have these different modes. And this is so, I mean, I love it. You can change it to a black and white background. You've got so many other options. You can actually even make it a black background and just what, look at what the mask is. So you can get in there and really refine it. And it's so easy to use. Now here's an example of selecting subject where it doesn't work. Like there's no clear subject. Here I would say the subject would be all these little huts but it's missed the main big one, which is surprising, and it's picked up some of the trees down there. So sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. That's not a negative thing, because we can do these We can do these plus and minus, we can add or subtract, and that's what I'm really excited to show you. The example I'm gonna show you is actually this lighthouse here. We're going to uh, take it from that to that, and I'm gonna apply lots of different masking tools. But before I do, so I just want to just touch on that, uh, that refining the selection now. Brian Matias explained this perfectly on his YouTube channel with his permission. I'm going to sh show you this little snippet from his video. The first thing you're going to do with the masking tool is select what. So you can either select, you know, using the select subject, select sky, or even a brush or one of the other filters. But then you can use either the intersect or the subtract plus invert to select where. And so it allows you to further refine specifically what you want to uh, adjust locally. And it's very, very powerful. How cool is that? So basically in, in a practical sense, I'm gonna show you here. So I have this, I'm gonna go through this quickly and then I'm gonna show you in a, in a slower and a bit more detail with the lighthouse. But here I just wanna show you really quickly, creating a mask, selecting the subject, it's gonna select the flower, it does a brilliant job. Now I'm going to subtract from that mask, a radial gradient, okay, so just a circle, all right. Now, what I'll do is I'll go into lightness and I'll go to exposure and you can see there it's exposing everywhere except that area that I subtracted. Okay, But what I want to do is that subtraction, I actually want to go and invert that. That's what Brian's talking about. So you make your, you select the subject, so we're selecting the where, so we've selected all this. Forget about it, I just want you to apply a local adjustment in this area. And then the what is where we do the minus and then invert. So now I can drag this around and create like a spotlight on this flower exactly where I want. And it's not just that, you can go in there and you can change the texture, make it smoother, you can change the temperature so that it looks like a bit of a sunburst that's coming through. But you can apply exactly where you want it to be within that selection. Pretty cool, isn't it? All right, let's get into the lighthouse. 
Let's stop mucking around. Let's get straight into it. That's what you're here for. Sky. So we're going to tap on the plus icon there. All right. We're going to go select sky. Now, have a look. It's not perfect. This is one of those scenarios where it's not perfect. And the reason for that is that the tones for the light, lighthouse and the sky are very similar. And it's a bit, you know, it's a bit of uh, bleeding there and going over the lines. But what we do, see down the bottom here, we've got a plus minus. We're going to go minus. So we're going to subtract from this mask. Going to go into the minus, subtract. Okay. A few options. We've got all these options. We can't do subject. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's give it a go. Select subject. Let's see if it picks up the lighthouse. One of the problems with this is that, see the handrails here? We've got sky behind those handrails. So for most people, this would be this would be really good, do the job, but I wanna see the sky. When I'm editing the sky, because I wanna make this sky really blue, it's gonna look funky because behind the handrails where the sky is, it's not gonna to apply to those. So I'm gonna just delete that one. All right, I'm gonna go minus again, subtract. And this time, I'm gonna use this really cool one, luminance range, which we haven't had on the smartphone before, which is really exciting. So what we do is we are subtracting from there, okay? Taking out the lighthouse. Now I'm gonna zoom in, pinch and zoom. Every photo editing app that you have and that you use always need to have that pinch and zoom. A lot of our built-in editors and our phones don't have that and it's a small screen. You need to be able to zoom in. This rectangle in the middle, that is the range of the brightness. So luminance is brightness. So if I go all the way to there, zoom, zoom it out, okay? And you can see there, I'm changing it, all right? Now, that is pretty much the mask we had before. And you can see in here, now, we're selecting behind the handrails, which is what I want. But I, w I don't want the edges of the lighthouse as well. So I'm gonna bring that across until we can see all the lighthouse. Okay, go back, 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 back. There we go. Do it incrementally. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, we can see here along the edges of the handrail and a bit there. So above this little slider, we have these two little spots here and we can pick that up and we can drag that. And what we're doing here is we are fine tuning it. Okay, and it's a balancing app between the two. <laughs> there we go, it's the one on the right, it's doing the job for us. Okay, and that is looking pretty darn good. Apply. So now we have the mask of the sky and we've got the nice edges using the luminance range and we've got the behind the handrails. How cool is this? So what I wanna show you now is the little three dots up the top corner there. So we tap on that. We can change the color to any of these colors. As we saw before, green overlay against the green background didn't work. So we can change all these other ones and find one that works for us. Okay, I'm gonna leave it there. And we can have a color overlay, color overlay on black and white. No matter what the scene is, you can bring up a nice contrast. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there like that, but I just wanted to show you those. And you can have it so that it always shows this overlay. All right, so we're in the light panel, highlights, let's see if we can bring that back down a little bit. Let's go into the color. This is the exciting bit, because now temperature, I can make this blue, and I can make it as blue as I want. Happy with that. And I'm going to decrease the saturation, add more blue, and just concentrate on that saturation. So it's a balancing act. Might add a little bit of purple there, just to add a bit of atmosphere. All right, that's looking really cool. Now, now, I'm a bit concerned about this halo effect here, so I'm going to go back into the masking, okay, up the top here, and I'm going to go back into here. Okay, tap on my little eyedropper, and I'm going to zoom in, and I'm just gonna work on this fine tuning a little bit more because it's not quite right. I wanna get a nice blend, there we go, I'm liking that. That's pretty cool. All right, that's looking better. So let's leave it at that. Now I wanted to show you how to smooth the sky. Texture, minus. So cool, bit of clarity, minus the texture. And now if we pinch and zoom, have a look at this. We can get rid of all this noise, any sort of artifacts, compression artifacts, any sort of noise, we can get rid of that. And press on the tick. Now that looks good. It does look a little bit copied and pasted and slapped on there, doesn't it? Because it's all the one tone. Now skies don't always work like that, especially blue skies. It's always dark blue up the top and then it gradually um, lightens as it gets towards the horizon. So we're gonna go back into the mask there. Now I'm going, to, I'm going to choose subtract. So I'm going to subtract. I'm going to do a linear gradient. And I'm going to do exactly that. Spin it around, there we go. <laughs> Gonna make it a bit longer, bring it down. And you can see there we've gone from a dark blue and I might need to go in there and just actually do that. I'm gonna make it a bit darker, all right. 
and then the saturation I'm going to actually bring the saturation back a little bit now I want it to blend I want it to look natural you know me always about trying to make it look natural and tick so there we go it's another example of using the subtract okay so now we want to do the subject so now we're going to tap on that press the plus select the subject and hopefully fingers crossed or the lighthouse fantastic oh you see what's happened here we do have a couple of extra bits it's picked up so there's a couple of ways we can do that it's minus and we can just brush so we can minus tap on the brush and make it super simple there we go just minus okay got rid of those now we do also have that issue behind the handrails again so i'm going to do minus subtract okay and i'm going to do the luminance again and we might have to go in here get in as close as we can there we go and bang just like that spot on perfect apply that now it's picked up some of the tree then the tree is a color it's green so let's go with the color so we're going to go there i'm going to go color range i'm going to pick up the tree there not behind the tree the actual tree <laughs> there we go change the refine just how much of a range that is so we're going to subtract that now you can see here i'm looking if i start adjusting it it's going to adjust on that tree so what i need to do is tap on the subject again zoom in a bit more so i can see what i'm doing exposure okay bring up the exposure contrast that's all looking good texture let's crunch that up bit of clarity okay zoom back out again always good to be in nice and close to see what you're doing, but then bring it back to make sure that it's all looking okay. Now you can see the color, it's not white. It's looking really flat. I'm going to add another gradient, uh, linear gradient to try and add a bit of shade and shadow to the edge. But first of all, before I do that, I'm going to add some sharpness. Then I'm going to go into color. And look at this, if I desaturate it, it's going to bring it out, all that white, and bring that white back, which is, which is fantastic. See? But I don't want a black and white. I just want a bit of white. All right, I'm going to tick that. I'm going to add another mask. Do another subject. Subject. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract from the mask. And I'm going to do a linear gradient. Around this way. There we go. I'm going to subtract. Just use the brush again. Subtract all that. Subtract all that, done. Oh, lost my mask, here we go. Okay, and now I'm going to just do a little bit of a fall off, a light fall off there, just to give a bit more shape to the lighthouse. That's looking really good now. Next, I'm going to work on the trees. I'm going to have a bit more punch to the trees. Selective, I'm going to do the color range. Color range, get these trees in. Look at that, I'm happy. Let's refine, get rid of some of the handrail color. Okay, I'm going to change the color a little bit, make it a bit more green, a bit more vibrant, and you can fine tune that up here in hue. You can just fine tune that as well. So it's less aggressive. Using color here, you can get some real funky stuff happening. Vibrance is missing. Okay, that's not there. That's okay. We can work around that. Press the tick when I'm happy. Now I want to add a little bit of a leading line in the path. So I want to bring our attention to the footpath. So I'm going to go back into masking. Press the plus, I'm going to use a brush. All right, we're going to zoom in. Zoom in with the brush. Let's go to flow, make it, I'll make it 50%. Now 50% means that it will take two times for the full effect to happen. 100% flow means you swipe on it, 100% of that adjustment will go through. If I make it 50%, then what will happen is it will take two swipes. Make sense? 20% it'll take five swipes get the point <laughs> all right so I'm happy with that brush size happy with that feathering the softness around the edges now I'm going to just swipe with my finger and I'll do that and I want to just remove some of it I just want to remove where I'm not very good at finger painting so I'm not really a fan of the brush never was okay and go into brightness and I'm just going to increase the exposure just a little bit Okay, there we go. That's enough. It's enough that your eye can go there and kind of lead you into there. All right, one last thing I want to do here is I want to, that red on top. I want to make that really punch. Now, I can do a selective and all that sort of thing, but let's do this. Let's go into digressing a little bit. I'm a perfectionist. I love to just <laughs> keep playing. So 
keep joining me. <laughs> We're going to go into here. And then up the top there, color channel, target, saturation. And I'm going to target on the red here. And I'm going to increase the saturation of the red. There we go. Job done. And I'm happy with that. There's our before. Normal, typical photo. There's our after. You can see I've squashed it, made it look a little bit more realistic. And I've just added a bit of color, a bit more separation between the lighthouse and the background. So there we go. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Hopefully that was a good example of what you can and can't do. I'm really excited that you can do a selection and then subtract or add to that selection. It's so good. We covered select subject, select sky, brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color range, luminous range. The only one we didn't cover was the depth range, which is an iOS thing. You have to use the portrait mode and save the file as a HEIC. Not many of us do that. So I just wanted to give you an example of a practical way that you could use this. And the more you play around with this, the faster it will become. And it's just a really powerful thing. And I'm really excited that we now have this option.